All right, this is a model of first century Jerusalem. Not during the time of Jesus, but a little later. And the model is based on descriptions from Josephus and also on archaeology because much of this would uh, have been built over over the centuries. And so they put together a model here at the Israel Museum. And let's check out some of the structures. I'm on the eastern side of the temple, so this would be the view from the Mount of Olives if you jumped really, really high. Let's talk walls, ladies and gentlemen. So we are looking at the western wall of the Temple Mount. And here you see a wall that's sort of inside the other walls of Jerusalem. That would have been the northern wall of Jerusalem during the time of Hezekiah. This is the wall that would have been torn down and then rebuilt after the Babylonian captivity. So Jerusalem would have been south of that area. Later, during the time of the Maccabees, there were houses north, and so for defensive purposes, a wall was built around that. That's called the second wall. So uh, that's the first wall over there, and then this is called the second wall. And then still later, in 68 AD, when the Jews understood that they were fighting the Romans, they built what's called the third wall. And that's the wall that goes all the way around. Here, just northwest of the Temple Mount, is the fortress of Antonia, built by Herod the Great. And that's where the Romans would have most likely been staying, the Roman soldiers. So now I'm on the southwest of the city. And here, you can see these large buildings. That would have been Herod's palace. So that's sort of one end, and then you have nice uh, courtyard area, and then that would be the other end. This was built for Herod the Great, but this is where Pontius Pilate would have been staying. So when the Jewish leaders took Jesus to Pontius Pilate for judgment, they would have taken him here. And this is where Pilate would have pronounced ultimate judgment that Jesus would be crucified. See this gate? This is the gate that Jesus most likely would have walked through on his way to the cross. And over here, this is now the site of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre because this is the main contender for the site where Jesus would have been crucified and buried. This would have been outside the city of Jerusalem during the time of Jesus. Again, uh, much of this was built and the, this wall was built in 68, so after the time of Jesus. The wall built uh, for the war with Rome and these houses would have uh, been expanding leading up to that. So this is the palace of Herod. This is where Pilate would have pronounced judgment, so Jesus would have been taken with his cross, dropped his cross, and gone out through that gate to be crucified in this area, outside the city. And notice that it's not tremendously far, but the crowd that would have jeered that Jesus would have been people that probably were deliberately gathered up for a mob along the way here. So now I'm on the northern side of the city. So this is the uh, looking at the temple from the north of Jerusalem. And uh, you can see the second wall there that would have been built. And then the third wall would be back here. I'm pointing this out because there's an alternative location of the tomb and Jesus' crucifixion. And so this is the area of the garden tomb. So this is the alternative location. Remember, after the Romans 
conquered Israel. Uh, much of this, as far as the, the big structures, were destroyed, and uh, later uh, Roman rulers and others built over much of this, changed a lot of the layout. So things have to be kind of pieced together, pulling out details from the records that we have. But this is the alternative location for the area of the crucifixion and burial. So this would have been the view of first century Jerusalem from the west. Temple Mount, Fortress, Herod's Palace. This would be the view of Jerusalem from the south shortly before the Roman conquest of Jerusalem. Hi, we just did a walkthrough of Yad Vashem, which is Israel's Holocaust Museum. It's dedicated to remembering the Jews who died during the Holocaust and to remembering the Jews who fought against the Holocaust, those who resisted it, and to remembering non-Jews who put their lives at risk to help Jews during the Holocaust. You're not allowed to record the exhibits inside except in the Hall of Names. Uh, I'll show you a clip from the Hall of Names where I was allowed to record. The pictures on the wall are pictures of Jews who didn't get a proper Jewish burial because they died during the Holocaust. And the binders you see on the wall are binders full of names of Jews who died during the Holocaust. And uh, the hole in the floor is a memorial grave for them. Here's a clip. As you exit Yad Vashem, you see Jerusalem. Think about the imagery. Now and forever, the memory of those who rebelled in the camps and ghettos, fought in the woods, in the underground, and with the allied forces, 
who braved their way to Eretz Israel, and those who died sanctifying the name of God. This tree is in the Garden of the Righteous. And this one's dedicated to this couple. Be like these two. And this one's dedicated to Look her up. This is the Mahta Yehuda Market. Shalom there.